Here's a controversial take. Most developers suck at design. I was one of them. I maybe still am one of them, but I do feel like I've learned a few things that I want to share with you guys that's helped me suck less. We're not going to talk about color theory or font pairing or any specific stuff like that. I just want to try to make some super basic ideas stick for you so that I can stop getting portfolio projects sent to me that look like a 2003 Toyota Camry. Anyways, here is what I've got. To my dumb programmer brain, this is totally fine. The cards are separated by color. The dates are less important, so they're using a lighter color, but we can begin to see how cramped this is when we actually take a look at how the anthropic designers actually put this together. To me, this is a lot easier to read when you're skimming. Your eyes are really drawn to these headings and it even makes it easier to see like the see all button over here. It has a lot more white space around it. And I think that when I run into issues like this, it's really just my dumb programmer brain. I'm very used to using relatively small values when it comes to, you know, text and whatever it may be. So something like 24 pixels between the words and the cards or around the sides of the padding or eight pixels between these pieces of text or 12 pixels padding on the inside. You know, this all just feels big to me for some reason, like it feels like plenty of room. But when you compare this to the real numbers, you can see that you can really go way bigger than this. So you can just take a look, but one good example is, I mean, they have 76 pixels of padding or margin just between the text inside of the card. One way that I found personally to remedy this is just by starting with way too much white space and then reducing it until it looks good as opposed to doing it the other way around. That seemed to work pretty well for me. So you can do a lot of things to make an element more or less important on the page. You can increase or decrease its size. You can make it bold like this text right here. You can give it a background color like these buttons. You can even you know underline it like this learn more piece right here. And you can even make it animate, which obviously I don't have an example of right here. But us developers love to do all of these things to everything. We like to take our headlines and make them both bigger and bolder. Every action feels like it needs to have some kind of background color. And really this can just lead to things being more confusing than useful. And what we're looking at here is my worst version of Medium's publish page. So this is their version. There are two buttons, an important one and a less important one. People probably don't need to have, you know, more colors to actually show them that. And, you know, for instance, just highlighting the name is plenty. It doesn't need to be massive and highlighted and bold. All of this is part of what's called hierarchy and my dumb developer brain solution for this is simply to ask yourself, how important is this element really, especially related to all of the other elements around it? Okay, so I get it. I really like fancy stuff too. Whenever I see, you know, cool looking websites like these ones, I wanna try and, you know, make something similar for my own projects, but you really have to earn the ability to do this else you're probably just gonna end up making something that looks you know, something like this. Now you might think that I'm joking here, but I get sent stuff that looks like this all the time. You know, odd color choices used in weird ways, leading to all kinds of, you know, accessibility issues where you can't read text or something like this up here. And, you know, just overall general grossness using multiple fonts, but they're not really used in any kind of consistent manner between elements or anything. And of course, just some random oddly shaped blobs thrown in there. Here is my tip. So instead of trying to start with something fancy like this, just start with black and white. Toss in a couple of shades of gray for slightly less important stuff like underlines and links and stuff. Use one simple popular sans serif font. If you really want to use a second one, just use it for big headings and stuff. And once you've worked out what actually feels good in black and white, feel free to go ahead and add some colors to you know buttons or anything where it just makes sense. And just be honest with yourself as to whether or not you're actually adding to the experience, making it better, or you're just making it worse. In short, keep it simple, stupid. I can sum this next one up with one example. Do you have any idea what's going to happen when I click this button? The answer should probably be no, because I didn't tell you anything about it anywhere on this page. I see so many side projects and things where I sign up and get dropped on a screen that looks like this with absolutely no guidance at all. You should try to have some method of helping your users understand what they're looking at. So an example that I put together could just be, you know, something like this. This could mean adding empty states like this model that I have here or onboarding flows. So it actually fills out some of the UI for your user before they actually get there or onboarding tours or just, you know, making sure that you're being more explicit with the text. I don't know if you can really read that. You'll see like new test there. There's a million different things that you can do. Really the most important thing is to test with real people because you'll be really surprised by how much of your app trips them up. In short, assume people know nothing because that's probably the case. Last tip, and it's a super easy one. You are not going to get sued because your nav bar looks vaguely like somebody else's. Everyone's nav bar looks vaguely like somebody else's. If you can't find a way to make your thing look good, find an example of somebody else who already did. 99.9999999% of everything you'll ever do building websites has been done a billion times before 
Do not feel the need to reinvent the wheel, just steal what's already working for other people. Or of course use libraries. Wow, what a great time for a segue. If you want your newly found fancy website to have cool animations, my website hover.dev can help you with that. I've got a whole bunch of them. Whether you're looking for nav bars or buttons or full hero sections or pricing sections or whatever, everything is built on top of React, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. Beyond that, if you got any value out of this, I would also massively appreciate a like or a comment or subscribe or all of that good stuff. See you guys next time. Peace.